camera and you are Don McClay. Don McClay. Yes. You're on camera and you are running for mayor of Oakland. I guess I am. <laughs> Spell your name for everybody. M A C L E A Y. Hey Don, what motivated you to run for Oakland? Uh, to be real honest, yeah. the job itself. Uh, I've been around City Hall, uh, volunteering at things with the Chamber. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, involved with things with the City Council, just as a community person. And I started to have a lot of enthusiasm for things that the mayor could do. You know, you start thinking that way, and then suddenly you start saying, well, maybe I really want to do it. What, I mean, we know each other, and people that follow my blog know that I'm acquainted with you through the Oakland Parking Initiative. Uh, but did, there was something you wrote, did that have some part to do with why you ran? Because you wrote something to me about your concern that I thought maybe it was a catalyst, but it, you know, but talk to me about that and other it's things in Oakland. one of several catalysts. I, um, I kind of live with one foot in the business world, because I'm a small business operator here in Oakland and I have five employees, and I have to leave this interview to go sign paychecks. Yeah, so what's, your, what's your business? I'm a computer consultant, and I hire a few other consultants who are better at it than me. <laughs> and uh, we do small office networking. Yeah. Our clients are small offices here in Oakland, around the Bay Area. Um, the other foot has always been in progressive politics, community, volunteering. I've, done what I could. I volunteer at the school, I volunteer at the small business symposium with Larry Reed's office, mm -hmm. which we may hold again. We're yes. thinking of holding one in May. And I also, you know, crime prevention councils, neighborhood watch, uh, gardening. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. do what you can. Yeah. So I'm kind of one of those old-fashioned, progressive, neighborhood volunteer type of guys. And uh, between between thinking that the government could be doing us a better job and also having some real policy concerns, just mm -hmm. as a person that thinks about these things, reads about them, uh, I decided that I was not in tune where council and, at the time, Jerry Brown were going. Mm -hmm. I really felt that, uh, I felt that the day-to-day -day business needs and the day-to-day -day social needs mm -hmm. were not being met. I felt like people were dreaming, uh, big, big pipe dreams, mm -hmm. and a lot of little things were not being paid attention to. Uh, when Ron Dellums announced that he was going to run for mayor, I was at the uh, event there at Laney College, mm -hmm. and Ron Dellums said that he didn't think running for mayor of Oakland had to do with filling potholes, and I just couldn't disagree more, uh -huh. and that's, uh, I wrote him a letter. <laughs> He didn't appreciate it much, <laughs> but I, uh, I uh, now we're at the end of the Dalton's administration, and I really feel that I would like to be a mayor who's interested in the potholes, who's interested in a lot of those details. So sometimes a good idea can be lost in the details. Well, okay, so I'm an Oaklander, and I always read about Don Parada because the Bay, the East Bay Express always writes about him. That's Bob Gavin. And then I always hear about Gene Kwan. So I know about these people and they're kind of like the lesser of the evils. You're a new guy. Why should I vote for you instead of the knowns? Um, well, that's my challenge. That's the challenge of my campaign is to engage the citizens of Oakland in a conversation about exactly that. Why should we vote for a civilian when we have guys in the army? Hmm. And some people treat it sort of like that. You don't take a civilian and make him a general. But you know what? It's not an army. And frankly, inside politicians and lawyers, we're not lacking that in public service. We have enough lawyers. Um, so I'm going to be trying to convince the people, it's a dialogue I need to have with them, that somebody more from the community can do this job. It's a leadership job. But do you have a fire in the belly? Oh, I love it. I love it. I've I've been a politician now you got for the three eye weeks. Of the tiger? I don't know about that. I know that I would thrill the fight. Yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to conversing with it. Um, I found it. I, I really enjoy speaking with the public groups, hmm. even if they're not.
my favorite supporters. Uh, I've been to the police association, uh, neighborhood crime prevention council, stuff like that, where the message that I'm bringing, which is one of alternative forms of policing, alternative for, you know, I'm very pro-restorative justice. I'm very pro-diversion programs. Uh, I'm very pro-holding uh, uh, lawbreakers accountable in a way that brings them into society instead of pushing them out. Mm -hmm. And I'm very pro-reaching out to the truants, uh, the high school truants, to the uh, people with substance abuse issues, to the people who are on parole, and trying to deal with this from a social point of view. And I often go into places where people think of it from a policing point of view. They want to arrest their way to paradise. Mm -hmm. And, well, I'm joined by like former chiefs of police in saying that that's not gonna work. And that it's attention to the social issues that really changes things. Oscar Grant. Delms was widely criticized for his late response to the, it can, well, would turn into a riot. If that happened, what would you have done? It's a hard thing to do. Uh, I think Dellums was kind of unfairly criticized for one. Uh, the man was out there on the street. He has not been the kind of mayor that's out in public all the time. Mm -hmm. Dellums went out there to meet with the demonstrators. But Davey D, hip hop reporter, would say that it took a long time for him to get out. That he, could be. You know, that he, could be. So, um, what would you do? You're mayor. What, what would you do? Well, for one, you don't need to think a second. To, you do not need to think one second that when a police officer kills a civilian that we, the government, are accountable. Now, it wasn't his police officer that did it. It was a BART police officer, but it happened in Oakland turf. And we have accountability to the civil society that's immediate. And I think that's where I would start. I would start by taking personal responsibility. Responsibility. It doesn't matter whether or not you gave orders or made mistakes or what it is. If you have the leadership job, you got to get out there and take responsibility. This is something I respect Barack Obama for a lot. Um, he, he knows whose job it is to fix it first. Then he goes out and figures out what the problem is. And that's kind of, I think, the only way you can deal with a situation like that. And they'll happen. Is crime too much of a problem in Oakland, or, or is it that we pay too much attention to it and it's less of a problem than we think? Both. Um, I was at a police officers meeting in North Oakland. Um, I've forgotten the name of the district commander. There's three districts now. And he was telling us that 2,100 cases a month get shelved because they have no way to solve them. They have no witnesses, no physical evidence. They have no way to chase that crime down. 2,100 crimes a month. Now that's reported crimes. Everybody who lives in Oakland, they or their family, feels it. They don't need a statistic to know that there's a high crime rate here in Oakland. You can't walk down one of these streets here, you'll find broken glass. So that's 25,000 reported crimes a year. Right, in a, in a city with only 400,000 people. Wow. And the reporting rate, is maybe 50% and lower among African American communities, among Latino communities, where people uh, feel a certain amount of intimidation from the crime breakers and a certain amount of lack of attention from the crime fighters. Uh, we don't really know how bad the underreporting is, but there are ways to study that. There's, and I would, as mayor, that's one of the things I would want to find out what's the real number? Raiders. They say they need a new stadium. The A say they need a new stadium. What's your position on all this? We're in the middle of a financial crisis. Um, there are monies locked into the uh, CETA side of the government. There are development monies, redevelopment monies, that we're not allowed to spend on day-to-day -day operations, libraries, uh, health, things like that. About a half a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the only place I'd take it from. I certainly would not take a dime out of general funds right now for an adventure like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to see the business plan. I'm a small business person myself, but uh, we've seen a lot of these plans come and go. 
Jack London Square was supposed to be some kind of a miracle. The Uptown Project was supposed to be some kind of a miracle. Uh, we've been 17 years trying to plan the MacArthur Bart Transit Village. We haven't so much as moved one brick. Uh, so I'm skeptical. Not negative in all cases, but very skeptical. And I would put a lot more scrutiny onto a thing like that before I said yes. What about the airport connector issue? Oh, I'm against that. I have no problem. Just, um, I understand the need for better transit in this area. And one of the problems is we have overlapping and competing transit agencies. It's a ridiculous, ridiculous situation. Um, and we should be screaming, the city government should be screaming for better coordination. AC Transit should be a feeder system to BART, not a competitor. They still don't have their common ticket. They were supposed to have a common ticket 10 years ago. Uh, you know, people in the private sector would have gotten fired for that. And the job of putting the heat on these agencies and saying we want better performance, I think it falls on city government, among others. All right. right? Paul, so what kind of administration are you going to have? Here's what I mean. And I know it's, uh, I know you've been on the, the, the campaign job for three weeks now, or thereabouts. Hold on a second. Yeah, so as I was saying, different mayors have had different types of staff. Jerry Brown had a, a kind of a minimal staff, not policy advisors. He relied on the city administrator office, what we called the city manager's office. Elihu was weak mayor, or council manager for government, not so much weak mayor, had 27 policy advisors, including myself, and we went out and we knew the right questions to ask with the city staff to get the right answers. You know, everybody has their approach, but have you given some thought to what your approach is going to be? Yes, and it's neither of those. Okay. Um, I'm very concerned with the day-to-day -day function of management. Mm -hmm. um, I think oversight is what's most neglected. I think uh, the council's official job, which is oversight, is not getting the attention it deserves. And I think there's way too much micromanagement. So, I, and of course you have 5,500. Russo has said that yeah. uh, some of the executive decision making has been taken away from the mayor and the council has grabbed it. Not legally. Um, we're not talking. We're talking in terms of function, not. Yeah, we're talking about de facto. Because we, because I did clarify yeah. that with him on the interview. I said, "Do you mean that they're violating the, con the city charter?" He said, "No, no, no." He meant in a sort of a more informal way. I knew. You know, I guess. It, well, not only informal, informal ways in the budgeting process. Instead of giving targets to mm -hmm. departments and whatnot, council started getting in there and saying, "You need to cut one person or two people." And in Russo's case, he, in his report, said because they cut the number of lawyers he has on staff, they then had to order out services. Right. Well, guess what, you know, it costs you more to call in for, for a Chinese right. food than to go and make it and yourself he said that. in yeah. the kitchen. Yeah. He said and that. that's it. Part of his report for this year is part of the, his deficit was caused by being forced by council to order services from council. private law firms. Right. And, you know, you pay full price. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. you have somebody on staff, 600 you pay, an hour. You know, you're, you're paying their salary, which is much less. Yeah. Um, and he was not given the room to make those decisions himself. And I think council is getting off into micromanaging the various departments that way, and the proof is in the pudding. It's not mm -hmm. working. And frankly, I think, um, might sound strange, but Oakland kind of needs a more dynamic bureaucracy. We need administrators who work for the city, who do this for a living, mm -hmm. to do a good job. They need the backup of the city administrator. They need a mayor who's on their side. And they need a council that provides support and oversight in the areas that they're really lacking. How, how Policy. Do we, yeah, how do, speaking of which, how do we get in situations where we're spending, or gonna spend something like 2.4 million for parking meters to recover $146,000, yet we provide $400,000 worth of free parking to the city of Oakland? Employees? Is, yes. What's wrong with this picture? Well, everything. And I said earlier that a lot of it is devil in detail. Yeah. And that's what I would like to see as an administration. An administration that pays attention to details. These are not the big details. Some of the bigger details are the contracts that we're handing out to people. We get a lot of money that comes to the city of Oakland with strings attached. What do you mean? 
Well, we can only spend it in redevelopment, we mm -hmm. can only spend it for stimulus projects, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But what are our strings? Why don't we put strings attached? Do we say, well, if you're going to get this concession, we're going to make sure you have a certain number of opening hours. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we could say we want so many Oaklanders on the job if you're going to be building this project. Uh, there's no reason for us not to attach our own strings. We're handling it. We're handling a half billion dollars a year. We should make sure that it happens in a way that benefits us the most. And I think there's a lot of attention to detail that needs to be done across the board. You now, one of the things Sorry. I got to say here, I really don't believe in shaking the bureaucracy up and coming in with a bunch of new ideas all at once. Mm -hmm. um, it takes years to develop a good functioning department. Mm -hmm. It takes years to get things going. A good example of this is we had a thing called the One Stop Capital Shop uh -huh. that was years ago. And with different administrations and different zigzags, we lost a lot of the energy, a lot of the thinking power, a lot of the procedures and setups that make a piece of administration run. Right. And we lost a lot of the people. And then we reassembled it and now we have a business outreach department. And I would say, let's stop making these quick changes. If we're gonna make a quick change, we're gonna make a change, we're gonna have to develop a broader consensus. And as mayor, I would have to reach out to the other people in the council who maybe aren't my favorite people and don't, ha don't share a lot of ideology with me, but we don't want to have zigzag changes. They cost the city a lot and they lead to lower quality services. You're a business owner in Oakland. What, as mayor, would you do to make it easier for small businesses like myself to function? Uh, well, that's, I was talking about the uh, business uh, outreach right. department that they just set up. Uh, I think that's a good start. That's a good start right there. And I'm not just thinking about the business owners, but also the property owners, your everyday citizen, sure. stuff like that. One of the things that makes that business department work well is you sit down and talk to a trained city employee, a manager. They manage your case. And then that city employee turns around and navigates the system for you. Mm -hmm. You explain to them what you need to do. They help you get the permits. They get you the right meetings with the right people. They get you the applications for the right things. Well, that's a lot of good service contract systems work that way yep. and I don't see why we shouldn't adopt it. Uh, that's a slow change mm -hmm. but where you could have one-stop interface and let experts manage the system sure. for you. We can, uh, we can talk about what the taxes are, we can talk about a lot of other things. Like I say, they should be changed slowly but the biggest thing is for the for the business owner or the citizen, the person that wants to buy a home here or sell their home here or fix their home here, mm -hmm. to know how to navigate the system. Now, the other thing about Harada and Quan is that some would say, well, they know the council and they can get things done with the council. Are you like that kind of person or are you like the Ted Dang, when he ran for mayor, <coughs> who was very antagonistic and said, hey, you know, I'm an outsider, and then he went blasting after the council, but, but, but. Uh, he didn't win. That could be. Um, kind of neither. Mm -hmm. My difference of opinion with uh, Mr. Parada and more with Jean Kwan because she's stated her, uh, her policies more clearly. Sure. Is really first and foremost with the policy. Mm -hmm. The priorities, things like that. So I see the election as the time where we argue about it. The election is where we're going to ask the people do you want to do it Don McClay's way? Do you want to do it Gene Par Gene, Gene's way? Mm -hmm. Do you want to do it Don Parada's way? Whatever that is, he hasn't really made that very clear. But then the election is where we argue. Afterwards, well, I'll have all the council at my house for dinner. Because mm -hmm. the only way we get anything done is working as a team. And uh, yeah, we should argue. But you, you know, uh, I would argue in council chambers. I would argue as a participant. Yeah. And if I'm elected, I will attend council meetings. Would that be meetings. a Brown Act violation if they're all there at once at your house? Not if you were there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. No. No, if we had the press there, it would not. Cool. Um, that means I have to bring the food. 
No, I pray for food. <laughs> I love to cook. Uh, you've talked to a lot of people now, right? Yeah, more than I can remember who they are. It's it's a. I'm now a politician. What What have you learned? Different things. One is um, there's still a lot of goodwill. That's one thing that really kind of keeps me going. There is still a lot of goodwill from citizens of Oakland I've met of all tribes. I, I, I was in an AIDS hospice yesterday uh, during the day. Uh, Wednesday I was in a meeting of business people. There's goodwill to do things with government here. Uh, that's, and that's very encouraging. The other thing is there's a lot of good thinking. Um, I go to planning meetings, I go to, you know, I went to the meeting about uh, the Upper Broadway mm -hmm. project. I also went to the meeting about the Kaiser expansion. Mm -hmm. Every one of these meetings, you have everyday citizens who turn up, who have paid attention, know the issues, know the details. So you were asking me what kind of an administration would I run? It would be an administration dependent on those people. In every one of our neighborhoods, we have volunteers, community activists that have really spent the time to think about all these issues. One person can't do it, but the community has that energy within it. What's your, what's your website? What's my website? It's mcclayformayor.org. That's M-A-C-L-E-A-Y, the number four, mayor.org. And I know that we're running close to our time. It looks like it's about to rain out here on Grand Avenue. It's a beautiful it wouldn't day. Bear. It wouldn't bear. I hope not. No. But, uh, <laughs> and we're at Merritt Station. If you ever come, it's a free hot spot, folks. Merritt Station in there. And hey, great Don. BLT sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you.